Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's July the 28th. That can mean only but one thing. It's time for Trump week. And today is going to be a bit of a reunion show. And I'm happy to introduce all our guests here right now. Uh, Aloha, everyone. We have today, uh, we have Cynthia Sinclair, Winston Welch, Stephanie Dalton, and back by popular demand, Jay Fidel. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Tim. Um, you know, hey, I love Zoom because we can get 20 more people on as guests, and I think that's going to be great. So uh, we promise a lot of lightning round type of questions and answers, and let's 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 get into it. Uh, the title of this show is Trump Stormtroopers Coming to a City Near You. And Cynthia, I'm going to go straight to you. And um, as you know, Donald Trump has sent troops. I, I, we won't say troops. We'll say military police. But he sent uh, them to Kansas City, Missouri, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, Chicago, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I don't think they've been invited. In fact, I know they haven't been invited. And they've been asked to leave. And Donald Trump and the uh, head of Homeland Security, Chad Wolf, said, no, they're not going anywhere. They're right where we want them. Uh, Cynthia, you've been watching this on and off for the last week and a half. Uh, your impressions, and uh, clearly now, now they have legal standing to be there. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what are your impressions about these military police and some of the shenanigans they've been up to? Well, I think they're kind of paramilitary forces, in my mind, anyway. And um, I think that it is the same thing I've been talking about for months and months here on Trump Week, which is Trump is trying to roll out his martial law plan. And by doing it slowly, which is the way that just about every authoritarian regime has done it, to people don't really notice, oh, it's just Portland. Oh, it's just Albuquerque. Oh, it's just, you know, Ohio. And, and so they feel like it's separated from them. And the problem with that is then before you know it, it's everywhere and it's too late to do anything about it. So I'm hoping that Americans will stand up and cry no more because this is bad. Well, this is a, you know, this is a fairly serious thing that you bring to, to the air here. And I guess the question is, is the purpose of uh, sending military federal troops or, or police into all these cities, is that a direct result of in case he doesn't accept the election results and that he's going to want to do over or worse yet, he's just going to say it doesn't count and I am staying in office. I mean, what, what would be the purpose of him to uh, declare some sort of martial law at this point? Well, he can say that there doesn't even need to be an election once martial law has been officially declared because he can do whatever he wants then. And that's why I think he's got to do it slowly because we'll realize what he's doing if he does it all at once. Okay. But I think that's why he's doing it. Okay, Stephanie, what are your thoughts about um, Donald Trump and Mr. Chad's, or excuse me, Mr. Wolf's um, actions to put in federal police, unidentified, going to rental car places, renting vans, uh, rolling around town, picking people off the streets, and not necessarily, not necessarily giving them Miranda rights and or habeas corpus? So sadly, ditto Cynthia, and I uh, wanted to make her point too that this is about the election. This is not about whether he's leaving the White House. This is about November the 3rd. So as he ramps up this occupation of cities uh, where there could be uh, reaction, especially um, a strong reaction, he will have reason to uh, declare martial law as we get closer to the date. And that's why we won't have the election because under martial law, you can't have that happen. So the election will not happen. And I noticed that in the hearings, somebody was asking, can the, can the president change the date of an election? And the answer was that some, they didn't know why they don't know and why that wasn't immediately looked up, whether he's got the right to change the election. But I think under martial law, your powers are quite expanded. So he would be able to do well, that. You, you could change the date of an election. What you cannot change is the date he has to leave office if not reelected. And that is January 20th at 1159 a.m. Yeah. So yes, you can change an election date for a, a variety of different reasons, but not the date of departure. 
this is well i i think the date of departure is as you say set i think that's a red herring i think it's a waste of time of precious uh thoughts and and plans for what to do about a whole host of other things if if the secret service as i understand it cannot take care of it we've got four services that could and it can get down I, it's not a prop that's that to me is much much more minor than the entire host already of these other fingers crossed on this okay hey winston um donald trump has selected the dea the uh, alcohol tobacco firearms the fbi as agents to come into these cities and as 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 is reported to protect federal property but we saw a recent report where he wants to bring in immigration um police now i think of all the groups that he's sent in there there's none more loyal to donald trump than immigration and i find that worrisome because now we don't have any critical thinking we just have those that will take orders and never question any particular order no matter how bad it gets uh your thoughts uh, it's, it's truly scary. And I think that uh, the, the Seattle mayor was right. This is a dry run for um, a martial law or a type of martial law. We don't, he's, um, he doesn't need to declare a lot of things. He can just do a lot of things and not call it what it is. And, and whether it's that's declared or not, uh, I think what Stephanie was saying was that this is a prelude to any number of actions. It could be election related. It could, it, it could be trying to stay in office. But I think even worse, it portends for the future of our nation after Donald Trump, where everything is becoming just uh, illegitimate and on the table for a future president to take these type of actions, who's perhaps uh, a smarter, more capable, more um, uh, Machiavellian than Donald Trump is. I, it's hard to see when you aren't seeing a mass pushback because it's only like, like uh, Cynthia said, it's, it's only Portland right? What's well, only Portland, because if they can get away with it in Portland uh, or in Seattle, then the other cities are not, are not as hard to go because they say, we're just here to establish law and order. For people on a certain viewpoint, obviously they're provoking folks that they know are going to be provoked. They're poking the bear for no good reason, except to have some good photo ops. So okay, well, it's let me scary follow, no matter let how me you follow look up with the question on that point. We did have a court decision saying that uh, the Trump administration was justified to have federal police uh, come in against the wishes of either the state governor or a city mayor. Um, now that that decision was pretty loose in its interpretation and they, they left the door wide open for uh, a, a whole host of new videos of, of, of police abuse and the intent of why they were there in the first place. So, um, so we had the court decision, but secondly, uh, remember Lafayette Park in Washington DC, right across from the White House, we had a whole host of, of, of former generals and chief of staff uh, raise the red flag saying this is totally inappropriate to bring in a military force to quell a peaceful citizen demonstration. Um, is this the same thing as the, the, the military, the airborne uh, troops that were being bussed in? Is this the same thing? I think if you're facing those folks on the ground, like the, the moms holding arms, uh, it doesn't really matter what their badge is, or in fact, in this case, isn't because we don't know who they are, where they're from, um, and what and what their intent is. So it's whether it's military, paramilitary, or uh, just a you know a, a sort of a Trump a storm Trumpers, as as I, I read. I think it doesn't matter. You're facing a heavily militarized um, a group of folks that are not accountable to anyone locally and who have been asked to leave by local authorities. And where do we draw the line on that as Americans? You could point to something like Little Rock and the federal troops were there to integrate the schools. That was something about protecting Americans' rights. This isn't about protecting Americans' rights from uh, many people's perspective. Okay, we need, the, yes, of course, we need our, our federal buildings to be safe and protected, but that can be accomplished in many other ways. And I don't think that's the real. Well, issue we actually here. had some, some, you know, a, a situation not long ago with the Tea Party called Occupy Wall Street. And of those demonstrations in a variety of cities across the country, um, and through some of the court cases, it was found that the state and cities had a lot more jurisdiction on these sort of things than their right to the First Amendment. So it seems to me that uh, back then, the states and local jurisdictions had some authority. But now, according to this one uh, 
a court ruling that's been reversed almost. So that's that's an interesting way of uh, how the how the ball bounces. Well, it's just like when we were uh, when, when you thought Jeff Sessions, oh God, and then at the end we were like, oh Jeff Sessions, you're going to save us from Donald Trump at the very end, right? We thought, oh he's actually. It's kind of like that that you're looking at your goalposts shifts. Oh, it's suddenly over here. So we're, we've been so bamboozled that it's hard to 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 um, see reality for what it really needs to be and we just need to keep our eyes on the ball even though it's a very moving target all righty thank you winston mr fidel um so basically the court has said uh federal police are allowed to come in against the wishes of the governor or the mayor uh because their sole purpose is to protect the federal property no, that's, that's not that was not the substantive holding the substantive holding was that the complaint by the attorney general of the state of uh, Oregon was misconstrued, mis, 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 it missed the mark. Uh, there were there were flaws in it. Right. And this was more technical than anything else. It was not a substantive holding that yes, uh, that Trump could bring these people in, and he and the um, the uh, the judge left it open as to whether the attorney general could refile that. But we haven't heard anything about a refiling, and that's that's a disappointment. A better attorney general would have refiled the same day right. and met all, all the judges' concerns about it. But the bottom line, I, I think, that Trump is testing. He's always testing, as um, you know, as uh, uh, as psycho psychopaths do. He wants to see how far he can push it. He wanted to see how far he could push it in Washington. He learned from Washington. He he learned from that general what was named Milley that it's not a great idea to bring the armed forces and the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff in on something like this. My guess is that in the case of Oregon, he tried to get the army in, but they said, no, the Joint Chiefs said, no, it's not our bag. Then he organized the thing with these phony uh, paramilitary. And they're not military. You counted off the number of the groups that are in there. They're not military. They're various, they're various sources of, of, I guess you could say police. That's why they had to label Well, and, and, and here's where the cases go, because they're probably not well-trained in crowd control. Um, they're coming it's not from that. A, it's not that, Tim. It's not that. He's, he's learned by um, the press. You know, he follows the news, and he, he follows where he succeeds and where he fails, where he gets pushback. So he wants to go in there and, and dump on the state and dump on the city, and if possible, separate the city and the state. You know, he's into chaos. The more he, he believes, rightly so for him, that chaos works in his favor. It's going to work to help him win. He wants to show that he can dominate the streets. That's his word. He wants to show his base that when he says he's going to do law and order, he's going to do law and order. It doesn't matter what the justification is. He had to find something, just like Barr had to find things yesterday, justify his actions, and he did. But I, I would go with, uh, I, I think it was Stephanie was saying wisely, um, maybe all of you have been saying wisely, that this is just a warm-up. Um, and uh, yeah, I agree with you, Winston. He's not going to call it military uh, martial law, but it will be martial law in November. And he'll do something outrageous before the election. There'll be the same people or many more people in the streets. And then he'll send the, the crowd out again, the quote, police to okay. dominate the streets. And then we'll have a de facto version of martial law or he will lose. He will lose and he will claim that, you know, it's a rigged election and all that. And the same people will go out in the streets. We will have this again, if not then, but before then and then. And so my, my, my real worry here is that we're going to see he's already established for the lack of a, a good result in that court case. He can go elsewhere. Okay, for the well, lack let me of throw anybody out stopping him, he will go elsewhere. OK, let me throw out a hypothetical. We have 97 days left until the election. I heard uh, Mayor Durkin from Seattle say, we're playing into his game. And that is, they're allowed to be there to protect federal property. Why are they protecting federal property? Because the protests are at the front doorstep of these federal sites. So if, you're, if you really want to play the, you know, play the game right, uh, withdraw. Go to another site, a non-federal site. That gives, that gives the authority back to the governor and the mayor of each city to say, you have nothing to protect because there's no protesters there. Now, take your bag, grab your bag, get on the bus, Gus, and get out of here. And you got to do that before the election so that if there is some Machiavellian uh, strategy of Donald Trump here at play, um, you take that away from him. Oh, absolutely. That'd be a great strategy. It may not work, though. Another, another great strategy would be totally nonviolent protest, First Amendment protest. 
and whoever is behind any one of these protests should try to cast it that way and document it with lots of footage that it's nonviolent. And if we have that, we have a, a reasonable argument against him. Not to say that he can come up with some other kind of crazy argument to say, for example, it's a national emergency, maybe even martial law. And he's justified you know, to quell what he considers a disturbance. And it doesn't have to be in front of a courthouse. It doesn't have to be violent. It's just a disturbance uh, you know, against mm, the rule of law in some way. He'll, he'll, he'll fabricate it. And guess who'll back him up? Your friend William Barr will Barr. back him well, up. Well, he was, William Barr was asked that question yesterday. And I'll take this to, um... Cynthia, I'll take this to you. He was asked a question about whether you, he supported Donald Trump's theory that he has the right to question the election results. And if you remember Barr's response was, um, maybe, depending on, depending on the situation. I found that rather disheartening and, and pretty scary. Um, your thoughts? I found it terrifying because it just shows how much he will lie under oath to Congress and lead us all around by our nose and all of our representatives around by their nose as he, um, uh, um, and he plays his, oh, I'm dumb, kind of, you know, fumbling, whatever, when in reality, we know every single thing he says, every hesitation, every everything is planned and calculated, including that, well, maybe, because then he's wide open to say, well, I told you maybe, and now I have the reason. You know? okay. If I could add one thing about these protests that are, like you said, he will create it. I think Jay said he will create a problem if he doesn't have one. We know that nine tenths of the, the violence and the rioting and the destruction that has happened has happened because of outside agitators coming in and trying to undermine the message. And that's what they're doing. And they're succeeding in it too. Okay, good point. Well, Portland has its own crop. Uh, they're not outside there. Portland has a whole crop of uh, anarchists and they've always had them for years and decades. So um, it's a combination of both. Hey, I'm gonna switch gears here. Uh, Stephanie, I'm going to you. Um, COVID masks, they become the new symbol of defiance. They have been a symbol of defiance uh, from many red states that if Donald Trump doesn't feel they're necessary, then by gosh, oh golly, I don't think they're necessary. Uh, bottom line is Donald Trump has always been against masks. He's ridiculed those that would ask questions from, from the journalists. He would uh, ridicule his own staff. And now he does a little uh, about face, but he's right back to it again, where he's not wearing masks. And now he's, he's retweeting, uh, what I call faux doctors in lab coats about how masks are useless. And again, the reintroduction of hydrochloroquine. So regarding the mask, is it not the same as wearing a mega hat? Um, you know, I, this, this is a confusing, even more confusing than the disestablishmentarianism that's going on. But I, uh, in the cities, uh, especially Portland, but he has, he's on the surface of all of these things. He's only on the surface on everything because he doesn't have any deep knowledge or schema about anything, especially what he said he was going to have it for. But anyway, and that's one of the reasons he's not appreciated by the public because he doesn't have any deep knowledge at all, whereas of course Fauci does. But my point is that he's on the surface looking for what it will be to stimulate and dis disestablish everybody's uh, thinking about things as it comes from him in his powerhouse position. So he's, um, he's of course, and this gets into the main point, which is he's totally protected at all times. He is constantly protected and checked and he's safe. He is safe. He's walking around in a bubble. So well, Stephanie, let me, let me, let, let me interject everything. something here, if I may. Why? I mean, the polls show that 70% of Americans, be it GOP, be it independent, be it Democrat, they say that we're not going in the right direction of handling COVID. And masks may be the answer to reduce it. Why would he go against a 70% or a 68% a um, polling that's consistent, showing that he's on the wrong track for how he's dealing with COVID? Why would he do that politically? 
with well, 97 he, days with 97 days left in in our election cycle well he's not going to be able to say he's wrong ever that will never ever happen so he I, has, I, I, I he has to negotiate his way around that yeah anyway you, the other yeah go ahead jay go ahead jay you know that you know that he's negotiating with the state of oregon right now in fact i think they reached an agreement to pull the, the uh, federal police out okay and and what he does i mean if you go back to his real estate life in new york what he does is he takes an outrageous position he waits for the feedback and then he adjusts and i suggest to you we can see what happens that as we get closer to the election you're going to see him change these views you're going to see him try to turn that 70 percent and look good and try to get but the 30 percent his much, chance much. was his chance was last week and he tried it he tried it he said yeah i don't have anything against anyone wearing masks and that's a good thing and I get tested all the time. So, you know, we, we have a d different rule set for Donald Trump, but he said, I think it's a good thing. And I think it's probably something people should do. So that was last week. And then this week he is retweeting crazy videos of, of, of just the opposite. And why would he do that 97 days before an election when the polls clearly show that people do support the idea of masks for the most part? Uh, he can't do it. He can't hold on to a principle or a stance. He can't be consistent and he certainly can't admit that he's wrong. So I think that that's established by the Nisa's book and of course by all the other analyses and diagnoses of him by many, many experts over time. So knowing he's got, uh, okay. he's got to win. I'll buy that. I'll buy that because about two shows ago, I, I, would, I, I relayed a story about an HR director years ago told me, Tim, never try to make rational sense of an individual that has no rational sense. And uh, going to you, Winston, if we're dealing with something that's organic, as Mary Trump has uh, opined about from direct observation, she's a clinical uh, PhD psychologist and had years of observation. Uh, she certainly doesn't suggest it. She explicitly states that Donald Trump has organic personality disorders, and that's who we've elected. And so we try to make sense of what he does and why he does it, but does it really come down to the fact that he's organically disabled? Uh, well, you know, she's a clinical psychologist and his niece, so I will defer to her on some expert opinion of, of, from a personal and professional nature. And I think any casual observation uh, shows you that there's something going on there, but uh, even if it's, that's the case, um, he is very, easily manipulated by people around him to uh, carry out their agenda. Uh, I, I noticed that it, what's interesting is that, you, you know, you have John, you gave, uh, wrote a, a piece in a June 22nd article of the National Review, basically about the DACA ruling of the Supreme Court saying that a president can impose policies without presidential approval, even if they violate the laws. And now the, uh, Mr. Yu is, told the Guardian yesterday that he is talking to the White House about how he uh, will help them bypass Congress to impose their own policies. So no matter what those policies may or may not be, we're seeing a lot of manipulation here by groups um, wanting to get their people in the, in the courts. I don't think Donald Trump has an ideological bone in his body. Like Stephanie said, the Republican National Committee yesterday endorsed condemning marriage equality for same-sex marriage, even though this is like three out of five Americans, two out of three Americans support this, but they have come against this now because that's one of their things. Abortion is another one. Whatever it is that you think it is, that's your issue and you can get it in his ear and that's gonna help him, it will get advanced. So uh, there's a lot of agendas here going on. He's very smart in that he takes the ones that he thinks he can run with and people don't care. Uh, maybe COVID, maybe they're over COVID by now. I don't know. When he said wear a mask, suddenly the number of his followers saying wearing a mask was a good idea jumped bigly. Um, so suddenly now it's okay to wear a mask because it came out on Fox News. And I, again, challenge all of you to watch Fox News for 48 hours if as, or as long as you can take it. And if you aren't convinced of their arguments by the end of 48 hours or in an insane asylum or need a detox, you're not doing it right. Although there are good and principled people there like Chris Wallace, um, mm -hmm. but you know, there's a lot there that is sort of infotainment, but you will understand where people are getting their news from and their points of view when you go there or the America One Network or um, uh, uh, who's the fellow in Florida, um, 
that talks to a Rush Limbaugh. I mean, there's a, there's a wide variety to choose from, but we need to be paying attention to understand where they're getting their information from, what is the agenda, and how they're executing it. Um, so as far as his mental fitness for office, um, he passed that the, the cognitive test. So um, I think we're probably uh, safe to go. Okay, thank you, Winston. Jay, um, you have a show tomorrow. I don't. I think it's eleven o'clock. Called Coronaville. Does Donald Trump, the administration, turn this tanker around as far as how he's being perceived on handling the coronavirus? And is there enough time in the election cycle to make any kind of difference on where the polls are and the perceptions of the American public on his inability to properly address a pandemic and a pandemic that's killed one hundred fifty-one thousand Americans? with over 4 million infected cases. Well, and it's going to get worse too. <clears throat> and that 70% could get worse. And it's the biggest issue for sure in this election. On the other hand, the election is his biggest issue. And, um, you know, he follows, he follows the news cycle and uh, he, he follows public opinion. Um, and uh, he knows about timing and he knows about confusion. So I really think, as I said before, that he's going to try something. He's going to try a lot of things to manipulate his 30 percent or 40, whatever it is, and to manipulate the 70 in his favor on the election. I mean, that's only one of many ways. Suppression, of course, is another way. But let me offer you this. I just saw this morning an article in The Atlantic, and the, it was called something like the reality of, of, the, of the vaccine. Um, and it just ticked off, you know, what was really happening on the vaccine and, and, and the long road we have. And I think sometimes Fauci is maybe too optimistic. It isn't going to be by the end of the year. Uh, it may be in mid next year at the very, very, very best. And then you have all these issues about distribution. Right. Um, and one of the things I found remarkable, and I, I know we're almost out of time uh, to leave you with, is this, this fact that was in that realities of the vaccine article, and I recommend it in, in the Atlantic, it said that 20% of the country are anti-vax. And they have said on Good surveys, point. they point. will not take the vax. So we're talking about, it's not only confusion, it's kind of insanity. That's what we have. Well, we have people that agree with the uh, Stella, Dr. Stella Emanuel that thinks that alien DNA is being intermixed with our our, our, our virus, um, you know, virus protection and our, our vaccines. So here you go. Is that 20% of the country that's going to buy off on alien DNA being intermixed with our, our, our cures? I don't know. But you get the last word on that, Jay. And uh, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank you, Cynthia Sinclair, Stephanie Dalton, Winston Welch, and Jay Fidel. Thank you for joining us on Trump Week. Join us next week, Wednesday, 11 o'clock. I'm Tim Apatel, your host. Aloha.